Our next speaker is Dr. Yan Ai Du, who is an assistant professor at the College of Applied Engineering, Sustainability, and Technology. He's a materials scientist and an internationally recognized scholar in solid oxide fuel cell, which I'll abbreviate SOFC, research and development. He directs research activities in the sustainability fuel cell laboratory at Kent State. Dr. Dew's authored or co-authored over 110 technical publications, including 27 peer-reviewed and internationally circulated journal articles, five book chapters, and 11 patents in key areas of SOFC design, material, fabrication, characterization, and operation. He's featured as a Google Scholar with 900 article citations and an H index of 12. He's earned both his MS and PhD degrees from the University of Waikato. Waikato. Waikato, I was close. <laughs> Uh, and a BSc from Xi'an Xi'an University of Architecture and Technology in China. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Du. Yeah, thank you, Doug. Um, thank you for staying here for uh, a little longer. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the fuel cell. Uh, who, who has uh, heard about the fuel cell? Raise your hand. Yeah, heard of, heard of. Yeah, it seems uh, we're uh, not, not to see. Uh, when I started uh, uh, fuel cell and came to the States uh, in 2000, and uh, I make a new friends, and they ask, you introduce, uh, what are you doing? Uh, I introduce, I'm working on fuel cell. So quite often, they don't know what's a fuel cell. But uh, nowadays, uh, with the climate change, energy, and uh, we heard uh, uh, fuel cell is one of the options. So today, we're going to uh, discuss that uh, the role of fuel cell and uh, see if we can uh, get a, a feeling that uh, yeah, if a fuel cell can do something good, make our world a little cleaner. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do, I go over that uh, um, uh, the energy, uh, the drive of fuel cell research, and a little bit about the fuel cell, fuel cell application, and touch a little bit about uh, my research. Since I joined Kenya State uh, three years ago, uh, get a lab just about uh, moved into the new lab in March 5th uh, last year. It's just a little over one half year with the uh, support from university, from college, and uh, from colleagues. I uh, 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 made some progress in my research. Why don't you just push the button? Put it Wrong button? Computer. Try the computer. Oh. Uh, we're disconnected. Idea on how to get switch on a computer again, yeah, but not up there. Uh, the computer is moving, but uh, not out there. Everybody wants to take a turn walking past the computer. Yeah, work. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. This, uh, thank you. A uh, little bit about the fuel cell application on my research. Uh, look at this. Uh, uh, what are we doing about the fuel cell? Uh, fuel cell is a part of clean energy. And uh, look at this chart uh, released in 2005. It's about uh, uh, 2014 data. Uh, US actually largely rely on uh, fossil fuel, 66%. We have about uh, uh, say uh, almost 20% uh, of nuclear uh, uh, energy, electricity from nuclear and 13% uh, from renewable. If you look at the renewables here, uh, this one, you have, uh, uh, yeah, you have the hydro, half of them are hydro. Uh, really nuclear uh, uh, renewable from solar, from wind, uh, from bio, it's about 7%. So the, the, the trend, uh, uh, look at the future. Uh, we don't burn a lot of oil, not much, and uh, nuclear keep uh, pretty much uh, steady. And we have a, a sharp drop in, from coal, and uh, uh, we'll continue to drop. But uh, the makeup for the drop from coal is we're burning more natural gas. 
And uh, also we see the green line renewables also increase uh, uh, quite a bit. So that's what uh, we are, uh, we okay. That's what we are doing to reduce the, the I couldn't see this uh, screen. Yeah, to uh, come to this corner. To reduce that, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, pollution, and we need uh, all kind of uh, uh, new renewable technology. We have solar, we have uh, hydro and wind. Uh, this uh, all together, even the nu nuclear biofuel. What we end up is that uh, dealing with the 60, uh, two thirds of our electricity from fossil fuel, and we need a fuel cell also. Uh, the fuel cell really can play a role uh, to turn the electricity into, uh, turn the fuel into electricity. And also it can, uh, uh, can um, compromise with uh, renewable energy. Like if you use solar, solar can reverse the operation of fuel cell to generate hydrogen, store the solar energy in the form of hydrogen, and then later on you can, you can run that. And also the other uh, uh, technology, uh, renewable technology also. So fuel cell really, uh, you, have, uh, you have the capacity to uh, provide a re uh, a reliable, clean and, uh, uh, electricity so without the constraint of uh, 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 time and uh, locations. So we need all of them. All of them. Uh, what is a fuel cell? In my term, is a fuel cell is a, a magic box. As uh, Dan wrote a letter in the future about a fuel cell, it's a really you turn uh, electric, uh, turn energy from fuel, different type of fuel, and throw that box into electricity. What we do, the difference is that uh, it's an electrochemical uh, process. It does not burn fuel. That's what a fuel cell does. Uh, the difference with the conventional technology. What we do, the conventional one, we, uh, we uh, burn the fuel and uh, generate uh, uh, heat energy and then um, generate steam and turn it into mechanical energy and then electrical uh, energy. So that's every time you change the form of uh, energy, you lose the uh, efficiency. So how does the fuel cell work? I showed here two type of fuel cells. One is that uh, uh, called a proton exchange membrane. Uh, is that uh, the hydrogen come here through uh, this uh, uh, in, uh, inlet, uh, you have uh, three layers, and this uh, layer called the proton exchange membrane, that's only allow proton to pass through, and uh, uh, you get uh, uh, oxygen from air come from this side, and then they combine together to form water, it's really clean water, and it release the uh, electrons. We control the process, the electrons uh, flows from outside, external uh, circuit uh, to come uh, uh, generate, uh, provide uh, electricity. Another type of fuel cell is the solid oxide fuel cell. This is the type of fuel cell I'm working on. It's the solid oxide, basically is ceramic. Everything is, uh, is ceramic. It's, uh, it's do the same thing. It uh, uh, can use uh, hydrogen, and uh, you see that hydrogen and the uh, same thing on this side. But what the difference is that uh, that type of fuel cell can take uh, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, uh, the mixture of carbon monoxide with hydrogen is called a thin gas. That thin gas, you can generate light from any hydrocarbon fuel, like uh, natural gas, propane, biofuel, and through that, you can directly fit into uh, this type of fuel cell. So the reason is that the hydrogen, if you make hydrogen, you can actually consume a lot of energy. So another difference is uh, fuel cell compared with uh, battery. They all were required and they do their work, you don't hear any noise. But the difference, the fuel cell so can run much longer. As long as you have a, a, a hydrogen and a, a oxygen and a fuel, the fuel cell is supposed to work to produce electricity continuously. So there are uh, nowadays uh, five major type of fuel cells uh, listed here, so uh, four of them. Salt oxide fuel cell and uh, molten carbon fuel cell, those two are high temperature fuel cells. They run at uh, uh, 600, 700, 800 degrees C up to 1,000. Those uh, two uh, polymer electrolyte or proton exchange membrane, uh, when you heard the uh, fuel cell, fuel cell car, fuel cell cars, they use this type of fuel cell. This type of fuel cell, they, they can only run very pure hydrogen. So you can see here, is, this was published in Nature. 
not my, my article, other uh, literature. They say it's, uh, uh, carbon monoxide has to be less than 10 ppm. That's the very pure uh, hydrogen. So what do you do if you run a natural gas and then you have to do a lot of reforming? This is the complexity of uh, reforming goes uh, uh, much difficult when you go down to uh, this level. What is with the salt oxide fuel cell, uh, at, at about this level, you can directly feed into, uh, into a salt oxide fuel cell. So this is the, in, potentially the salt oxide fuel cell could be much cheaper. So fuel cell, fuel cell, we heard that fuel cell have two parts, one's fuel, one's cell. The fuel part, we do the reforming, and for example, if we use the propane, and you go through the reforming, we get this part called the, uh, thin gas, and then we feed it into the fuel cell. So the catalyst part, you see this here, uh, 125 watt fuel cell, you only need the catalyst about the fingernail uh, size. We, we make a fuel cell, use the material, go through the process, we make it into different form. Uh, this is the tube that I worked on. You can make it into a, a, a planar shape, like a sandwich, put it together. And after you get a single tube, a single fuel cell, and then you put them into a bundle to generate more power. And after that, you package them with the insulation and put it into a box. Those are all actually I did, I made uh, in, in my, uh, during my research. This is the one, you have a propane, and you have a button there, you have the, uh, uh, the connection for electric load. You push the button, there is a program inside, and uh, runs itself. So this is about uh, uh, this type of fuel cell. Benefit is that uh, first one is uh, low to zero emission. Uh, if you run on hydrogen, it's zero emission. If you run on other hydrocarbon fuel, because the fuel cell is much more efficient, two to three times uh, efficient than the conventional technology, you actually uh, generate uh, much less uh, emissions. So this is uh, the one, the, how, how much, the, very briefly, that uh, the emission, you, you see here, the carbon. Carbon that, uh, uh, carbon, the, the efficiency here is 30 percent. Our electricity here is 33 percent. Somehow, the majority of the energy gets lost during the process. And fuel cell can do about uh, 80 to 90 percent. This is the uh, uh, data published uh, years ago. The emission side, uh, we, uh, fuel cell about, uh, uh, release about uh, uh, one third of the carbon emission. That's not, the, uh, not, not all. If we look at this term, global warming potential, uh, we heard of global warming, global warming, climate change. The global warming potential, they use the carbon as a carbon dioxide as standard, as one. And if you use the same amount of gas, if carbon dioxide is one, and uh, uh, NOx, the uh, nitrogen oxide, uh, will be 300 times worse than carbon. And you, you look at the sulfur, sulfur oxide, 30 something, 33,000 times than carbon dioxide. Uh, and uh, you also look at the data here with the fuel cell and the grid, fuel cell acting like a filter that really uh, reduces the, uh, the, uh, the emission. Go quickly, the uh, application, uh, fuel cell really like a electric, uh, it's a generator electricity. Anywhere you use electricity, you can use a fuel cell. The largest the one uh, nowadays uh, installed is a 53, 59 megawatts. Uh, I think it's probably larger than, uh, similar than the building. It's a, they call the fuel cell farm. The fuel cell was uh, uh, made in a company in the US, in Connecticut. And uh, all the Fortune country, uh, uh, Fortune 500, or Fortune 100 companies, they all have something to do with fuel cell. You see this uh, US is the top 10 uh, fuel cell application, Walmart, uh, AT&T. For Clift, they use a lot of uh, this uh, application in-house. Fuel cell, you can use the in-house, not like other conventional generator. You have to put it outside and keep your garage door open. And uh, Ohio State um, is uh, among the top five fuel cell states uh, here. And uh, last year, they got about uh, nine, almost $9 million to uh, build a fuel cell um, bus. And yesterday, they, they made the uh, robin cutting, the first the fuel cell uh, hydrogen station. Cars, that I hope that you, 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 you can have a chance to buy next the car, fuel cell car. 
and uh, Ford, uh, Toyota, Honda, uh, a lot of companies that really make a fuel cell cars, fairly expensive, $58,000. Uh, this is the train, first the uh, train, not uh, they sign a contract, they're going to run uh, uh, this uh, train around a hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, airport, so this is the US airport last year, they uh, deployed uh, first the cargo truck, this is the one. So a little bit about my research, I have two more minutes on about my research. Uh, once the, uh, this type of fuel cell, most of the fuel cells that use that uh, 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 tube, I had a, a patent that I called a, uh, a spiral fuel cell, really can move the performance from this solid line to about here, about uh, uh, three to five times uh, uh, better. So this is the uh, one technology, and we, we try to use the 3D printer, and we printed uh, some of these uh, prototypes, uh, some of them pro printed in, uh, in our college. And uh, uh, this is the metal, and here is the ceramic. Uh, there are a lot of challenges. You see there are defects here, and uh, we try to work it out. Another one is that uh, the, this is a pending uh, proposal, uh, get approved, uh, hopefully we can get the machine, and we will do a laser centering. We pick up one of this uh, laser centering, we can do the material and uh, make the fuel cell. Okay. And another way is that uh, you see currently we, we shut down a lot of coal uh, mining and we deliver electricity and sh uh, ship the carbon around the country, around the world. What do you do if we put a fuel cell next to the, to the energy source? You turn that fuel cell, uh, turn that uh, coal as energy into electricity and deliver it through grid and maybe you have a way to uh, capture the carbon. Another one called uh, carbon free. Uh, electricity, you use the renewable energy to generate uh, uh, chemicals like hydrogen or uh, ammonia. And then you break ammonia and feed hydrogen to fuel cell, release uh, nitrogen to the environment. It doesn't cause anything. So this is about a demonstration. I have a, uh, some of this type of fuel cell in the lab. And uh, if you have an opportunity, and then we can go there. Here's um, my team. Some of them are already left. Um, I housed a lot of visitors. Um, just this month, early this month, we got the, the Thai uh, uh, Secretary of uh, Science and Technology uh, stopped by uh, our fuel cell lab. And uh, middle of this month, we got a higher board of regions uh, stopped uh, in that lab. And this Friday, the board of trustees something held a meeting and wanted to visit the lab. They informed me. So I got about uh, over 100 uh, individuals uh, Somehow I, I reached out, uh, introduced the fuel cell, and uh, I plan to uh, run a fuel cell open house. Hopefully I can uh, invite you come to there to see uh, actually fuel cell running, not, not I'm talking here. I think that's, uh, that's all. I run out of time, I think. Thank you.